Okay, welcome back to comic book history. Yeah, I haven't done one since October. Mainly because I didn't find anything to think about talk about. This one I'm talking about a particular favorite character of mine, Black Lightning, a.k.a. Jefferson Pierce. First appeared in his own, first issue of his own self-titled series, created by Tony Isabella and Trevor, I have met Trevor, an awesome guy to meet. Yeah, the thing about these two guys is Trevor Ian is black, while in the case of Tony Isabella, I think he's Hispanic. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think he's black. No. Let's see. I think Tony Isabel is white. Yeah, it's one of those weird things where we a black character who's created who one of the artists one of the creators is black, but the creator's white. I mean, take a look. Let's say Blade, for example. The creators of that character are both white, though I don't have seen my, my, my pictures of Gene, the late Gene Cullen. <clears throat> black Lightning, a character, a black character with electric powers. I should point out, though, his original outfit was not like the way it was on the TV show. Now, the, the outfit they showed on the TV show is actually a completely different outfit than... It's actually an outfit he has worn in the, in the comics. That's not it. Yeah, it's actually, believe it or not, his his modern day attire. Mm -hmm. Let's see, yeah, his original outfit was actually completely different. Now, most people are made with the lightning bolt one. Let's see if we can find it here. Yeah, this is what his original outfit looked like in the comics. This, basically, this outfit that's very similar in style to that of Luke Cage's first outfit he's now wearing. Yeah, this is what he wore for a long period of time. He wore this outfit even up until the 80s. His mask may have changed, but the outfit remained pretty much the same. Now you're probably thinking, wait, that's his first costume? What the heck is up with this attire? Well, that was a style that basically was 1970s. Now, here's the thing about this character. You see, he did have an ongoing series published in the 70s. Got canceled of his shoes. The reason was, and kind of the same thing, the reason why a lot of the series got canceled in 1978, the DC implosion. Why did the implosion happen? Uh, from what I've read, apparently DC was not doing financially well in the late 70s. Apparently Marvel was doing perfectly fine, but not DC. DC was doing terribly in the late 70s financially. Despite the fact from the issue of books I've read, a lot of them are really damn good. Though, if anybody looked up basically a lot of the titles that were canceled, thanks to DC Implosion, I'd say about 50% of them were Jerry Conway books. <laughs> I didn't talk to much about him about DC Implosion, but I'm sure he felt pretty upset about half the titles I asked were his titles. Yes. Now, thing with the Black Lightning title, those of you familiar with the character of Tobias Whale, probably familiar with him thanks to the Black Lightning TV show, and also the fact this character also appeared on Beware of the Batman. He was probably the most reoccurring villain. Who he's, He was the only villain who appeared in most episodes. He was like one or two episodes. He appeared for almost the entire series. And this character was loosely based for a character from just like limited for like one episode. And this guy was also responsible for the death of the Bertinelli family with my, minus Helena. Yeah. Now in the case of Tobias, well... He was responsible for what happened with Black Lightning. Black Lightning didn't like very much. Now, those of you curious, though, so where is Black Lightning from? In the TV show, he's from Freeport. In the comics, he's from Suicide Slum. Now you're probably thinking, wait, what the heck is Suicide Slum? It is the poor section of Metropolis. Yes, that is where the guy is from. He's an Olympic gold medalist, and he did not like the crime there, so basically just, of course, he had to develop powers, and... The fact that he actually had his own costume made by a friend of his. 
Well, actually, an old family friend who actually was responsible for the death of his father. Yeah, he actually died after just seven issues in the series. Yeah, the character Pierre S. Espro, who was a tailor on the Black Light TV show, he is in the comics. But in the comics, he was only around for a very brief period of time. He was only around for the first seven issues of the original time before he got killed off. Now, currently, he has not made appearance in years, per se. And Black Lightning was married at some point, yes. Now, after his series got canceled, he did briefly appear in the World's Finest series, while also making a guest star appearance in a couple issues of Just Like America. It was a basically two issues, 176 and 177. What's significant about these issues and Black Lightning? Black Lightning was offered a, a chance to join the Justice League. He said no twice, which makes him the second member of the Outsiders to churn down the Justice League. The first this happened, he was actually the second person to actually do this for the Justice League, where they were offered membership but declined. The first person to do this was Metamorpho. Yeah, and that was something I think Danny O'Neill came up with. I believe these issues were written by Conway. And in case, if you read these issues during this period of time, yes, Just Like America had a brief period of time. I'd say, I think it was like 138 to about, I'd say about 180, where these were like giant sized issues, really freaking long. Why these issues were so long, I have honestly no idea. It was something they did back then. Of course, I wasn't reading them back then. I've read them online. Yes. Though I have read some of the old Just Like issues in physical comic form, but a lot of them I did read online. Yep. After he did that, he basically just wandered out as a feature in the in Detective Comics briefly. He he did not show up in Act Comics, surprisingly. He was featured in Detective. And then the early the nineteen eighty three happened. Yes. In the final issue of Brave and the Bold, he was revealed to be joined the, the new team of the Outsiders, which they explained the character's backstory in the first issue of Batman and the Outsiders, where Black Lightning was the first person that Batman recruited the join the outsiders and from the 80s and the 90s black lightning was heavily associated with the outsiders yep he was he was associated with outsiders for a long freaking time yeah he didn't join the justice league until like i think it was like the 2000s i think it was yeah that's the thing about him Yeah, yeah. basically throughout the 80s and about early, early mid 90s, he was heavily associated with the Outsiders. That's simply what he did. And then around the mid 90s, he briefly got a new ongoing series. They got canceled 12 issues. He also got a mini series, Black Light Year One. Also, there was this very strange rumor because basically both him and Sadek Shock looked look, look like each other, circling numbers with each other, that people assumed that Black Lightning was the father of Static Shock. This was a rumor that, as far as I know, is completely untrue. Yeah, this is a rumor that apparently I heard online. Apparently, yeah, there was a rumor going around because of the striking resemblance between Static Shock and Black Lightning. And no, it was not due to the fact they're black because they look very similar to each other. The people assume these two are father and son. Yeah, this is actually not true. Black Lightning does not have any sons. He has two daughters, despite the fact that in the third volume, they mistake his niece. For a daughter. I have no idea why. And then by the early 2000s, he was part of Lex Luthor's cabinet, the Secretary of Education. Yeah, that's pretty much what he did for the early 2000s. If you're wondering why he wasn't featured in the Jedi Wedding Run, despite the fact being heavily associated with the Outsiders, he was part of Lex Luthor's cabinet. So he had no... He was too busy to be part of the Outsiders. Yeah, he was part of that group. He was part of that cabinet up until Lex's resignation. And there was a comment made, I think, by his daughter, Thunder, who was a member of the outside at that point, that when her father was taken to education, people actually went to frickin' school. Yeah. The reason why he resigned was actually not due to Lex being out of it as basically the house as president. It was due to the death of his niece, which happened the pages of Joe Winnick's run for Green Arrow. Yes, he showed up for Green... And here's kind of the weird thing about this. Like, if you had never read, basically... Now, if you had just read... Now, people knew about his daughter over in... At this point, in The Outsiders. People had no idea he was an uncle. And here's kind of the interesting thing. There was one issue of... I believe was... This was this is during the first Arkham one for Green Arrow. 
Uh, Green Arrow had a one night stand with Black Lightning's niece. So basically, yeah, Green Arrow had a one night stand with his best, one of his closest friends' niece. Now, as far as I know, Black Lightning and Green Arrow, prior to this storyline, they never really interacted with each other. I mean, if you read any comic featuring them in it, or at least them being around it, to me, Green Arrow's been around since the 40s, Black Lightning's been around since the 70s. These two have Never really interacted before, maybe in the Justice League book, but in Green Arrow's book, no, they never interacted before. This death was at least referenced toward the end of the Joe Underground for the Outsiders, but Joe Winnick, who had wrote that very storyline, incorrectly assumed that that woman was one of Black Lightning's daughters. Yeah, I say it was his daughter, which is actually completely wrong. It was actually his niece. Yep. See, his first daughter he was introduced, of course, Joe Wick did create this character. Yeah, Whitaker was responsible for basically sort of expanding his family. Yeah, he created his, his first daughter and his niece. His daughter, a.k.a. Thunder, who was also featured just on the uh, Black on TV show, she became part of the Outsiders during Whitaker's run, and she was a pretty good character in the book. And toward the end of the run, she was out as a lesbian, and she saw a relationship with... The character Amazing Grace, a.k.a. Grace Choi, which they did reference on the TV show. And these two were a couple up until the Flash from Reboot. Yeah, these two stayed a couple, surprisingly. It was a relationship that barely got progressed after when it left the outsiders. Yeah, this was a relationship that wasn't really brought up very much. It was implied at one point these two got married, but nothing. Yes, but eventually when Chuck Dix took over the Outsiders, he put Black Lightning back on the team. But before this, Black Lightning actually went to jail for the death of his, I believe, causing death of a the guy who actually killed his niece. Because it was assumed that he killed the man who killed his niece. It was actually not him at all. It was actually freaking Deathstroke who was responsible for this. And this this was actually revealed in the it in the checked out cross up, which was the cross up between Checkmate and the Outsiders. Which fun little thing about this, Outsiders managed to continue after this for about five years. Not Checkmate, nope. Six issues later the book got cancelled. After this crossover wrapped up. It's a damn good crossover, how they recommend it. It happened toward the end of, of Greg Record's run for the book. Yeah. And the Outsiders did break him out of jail, and of course, thanks to information revealed to him by Red Hood of all people, yes, Jason Todd gave the Outsiders this information that Deathstroke was responsible for the death, the one who actually caused the death of the guy who killed Black Lightning's niece. And of course, Black Lightning was cleared, and then of course, that's when, of course, Nightwing handed over the leash of the team to Batman, and of course, he later added Black Lightning back to the team. And he was on the roster up until the Flashpoint reboot. Yeah, which... It was at that point... They, they also introduced in the pages of Just Sight America Volume 3. Which, that was basically still part of Jeff Johns. He, bri he briefly he came back to the book after leaving it toward the end of the JSA run. When it was no JSA, when it was launched Just Sight America, like America. He introduced Black Lightning's second daughter, Lightning. Not much is known about this character I could think of. Aside from the fact he's Black Lightning, she's Black Lightning's daughter, and she's actually the same powers. Yeah, she wasn't really, like, if you read the Justice Society America book, she was one character who wasn't really developed that very much. Yeah, it's assumed she's straight, but nothing much as I can think of now. Unlike when it was first born, which went into that fantastic job of developing this character in his run, Jeff John, despite by creating Lightning... Didn't do very much with the character, not not though I remember anyways, not out of the book, because it was something that I get now why Thunder's running the outside is because she's a daughter of Black Lightning. Makes sense. Why his daughter joined the JSA really made no sense at all. Yeah, this happened in a period of time, Raft Infant Crisis, when Black Lightning was finally out of the Justice League. And he was part of the title. Briefly, for about a couple years. And then after the events of Final Crisis, he rejoined the Outsiders. For about a couple years, and then the Flash reboot happened. Yeah, what did he do part of the team? He was kind of the unofficial, he was like, kind of the leader of the team in a way. It was either him or was Geoforce. Eventually, toward the, when it came Dan Dealer's book, the books 
the characters, the, the team split in half, and one half of the team, which is consisted of basically Owlman, this was the basic, this was the new Earth Owlman, not the one from Earth 3. No, this was actually Roy Raymond Jr. <laughs> this guy was a talk show host. Why this guy was a lot of part of the team, I have no idea. My only guess is the reason why Tomasi created the character was because DC probably wanted a Batman-esque character in the book. Since they probably couldn't have any of the Batman related characters part of the book on a regular basis. Though they did have Alpha briefly be the regular leader of the team behind the scenes, the field leader was mostly Geoforce. Yep. And then, of course, we had the Flash reboot happened. And pretty much, like, right after, of course, at one point during, during the time when they were focused on the Black Lightning team. They actually, like, need, need a place to stay. This part the fact War of the Superman was going on, like, okay, maybe we came up with a great idea. How about say was ex-father-in-law? Yes, ex-father-in-law. Yeah, he was briefly married to his love interest for a certain period of time, then they got divorced. Why they got divorced, I have, I don't know what the reasoning for that was. They did have a son together, but nothing much has come of it, I can think of. Yep, and they hung in there for a while. And of course, they had a number of persons join the team briefly. And then, toward the end of the run, the team was team. The team was completely spanned by Batman when he came back to lot when he returned to the title at the final issue, which is Batman: The Dark Knight of Forty. After that, uh, Black Lightning. Then, they, of course, we had the Flash reboot happen. And what did he do after the Flash reboot? Well, he popped up in the pages of the DC Universe Presents for four issues. It was him and Blue Devil. A team of feature. And then after this feature ended, he was briefly featured in a guest star ish, -ish appearance in Justice League. After this, nothing was done with this character for a long time. His next actual appearance would not come until Cold Dead Hands. Yeah, that, that miniseries. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this happened, now he was possibly in Justice League. This happened in 20, I think this was like, I'm trying to think, I think it was like 2012, 2013. He didn't do anything for four years. Four years. Nothing was on Black Lightning. No mention of his kids. Yeah, they actually de-aged the character, and there's no mention of him having kids. None at all. His daughter's completely disappeared. And as far as I know, there's no explanation for it because I want to de-age the characters. Yes. And the miniseries Cold at Hand, they had Black Lightning actually appear in the costume he would wear in the TV show. Now, the costume he would wear, they say, was the first costume he wore in the continuity. That costume was the costume he wore in the 2000s. Yeah, that's the interesting thing about that. That's actually Easter egg for his early 2000s outfit. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was the outfit he wore prior to Flashpoint. Yes, and after Cold at Hands, after which... This is a really good miniseries. It's mostly put like a reboot of the character. Probably ignoring his previous appearances that he made. And this book was noteworthy for me. Create This was this was written by one of his co-creators, Tony Isabella. Returns to the character first time since the 1970s. Yeah, first time since the original run, he came back to the book. Why in the world he has like come back to the character? I have my only guess because he created the character... And I have I have seen it where a lot of creators who basically created characters in the past, like 30, 40 years in the past, come back to characters. Like Jerry Conway came back to do, uh, he did for he did for Punisher, for Punisher Annual. He wrote he basically came back for Firestorm for his feature for uh, Legend of Tomorrow. Let's see, uh, Wolfman came back for to do a couple issues of some issues of Cyborg. Trying to think, though, was anything else? He also did an issue for Villains Month, basically talking about the character Trigo, which he did create the character. I can't think of anybody else I can think of. No. Yes. And after this miniseries wrapped up, like, almost nothing else was character for like a year until he popped up in the pages of the Tech to Comics in the storyline on the outside, which was all it was, was simply a backdoor pilot into. The new Batman Now series, series, which I have reviewed the first trade for that, which is really, really good. Basically, it was him forming, basically forming a new team. My guess is Brian Hill must have loved the concept of basically the comic being a team book. So he decided to sort of keep that concept 
and, well, revive the Outsiders, which the, the group itself came back. Thanks to Dark Knight Middle. You got to thank Scott Snyder for that. Because I mentioned the group did exist. Though for some reason, they kind of changed it when Brian Hill wrote the book. That this apparently is like a new version, like a new version of the Outsiders, like the first night team together. Yeah, where he brought in Katana, which he's associated with the, with the group. And basically, the Outsiders are, if you take off Batman out of the equation, the group itself consists of only four people. Yeah, it's just Black Lightning, Katana, Orphan, and Duke Thomas. And it's very heavily implied Duke Thomas and Cassandra can't think for each other in the book. Yeah, it's been implied. It's also been kind of implied that, <laughs> I kid you not, Katana and Jefferson and Black Lightning have a thing for each other. I'm not sure what the heck Brian Hill was thinking by implying that that two characters, Black Lightning and Katana, two characters who in the previous continuity were had never had a thing for each other. Get this. Uh, the only member of the Outsiders who actually had an attraction to Katana was Geoforce. As a matter of fact, he made he loved her despite the fact he was already married. Yes, and he really wanted to marry Katana because all smoking hot she is. Yeah, despite the fact she's a widow. Yeah, she's a widow and the fact she uh, did have a couple kids. Yes, Katana basically had a family that was killed. And... That's part of her backstory that she's had since she was first created back in the 80s. Yep. But, yeah. Not much else I can say about Black Lightning. He's been a pretty somewhat active character since his debut appearance. He's usually around in some book, per se. But if you look, let's say, the last 20 years, per se. Like from, let's say, 2000 to about last year, for example. Let's take that first 10 years. 2000-2010. Excuse me. Mostly put, what do you do that time? First half of the decade, he was mostly a guest star in people's books like Green Arrow and a few other books. That was pretty much it. Second half of the decade, he was still kind of a guest star until rejoining up with the Outsiders. And then, like, for the previous decade, 2011, 20, 2020, well, 2010, to, I think it was like 2010 to 2019, what do you do? Not a heck of a lot. Yeah, the previous decade, he did very little. Like, appearing for a feature in DC Universe Presents, a guest appearance for Justice League, and doing nothing for like four freaking years until he tried with that miniseries. And now he's appearing in The Outsiders. Yeah, I like the fact he's still being a feature per se, but he should have done a lot more. And, oh, in case you're wondering, like, in case you asked in the comment section, has any of his appearances, like any of his solo work of a collecting entry, like his, his first, second ongoing series, the miniseries Black Lightning Year One, which that was the thing with that, he said, I love you in year one. The answer is yes. All his self titled series are in trade, including Cold End Hands. Yes, that's in trade. The only thing not in trade is a solo feature from the Tet Comics. They did collect his World's Finest feature in the Black Lightning, well, the original classic run. They did collect that in trade with that, which. Here's the thing. They had the Walt Disney Series written by Danny O'Neill. Good, uh, interesting choice. But surprisingly, his Detective Comics run is not in trade. His run for Detective Comics was not very long, per se. His run was about 10 issues, per se. I mean, his feature was ended for the same reason Robin's feature was ended in the book. Because DC wanted to put him in group books. Like, Robin's feature was ended because he's put part of the new Teen Titans. Black Lightning because he's part of the Outsiders. That was simply just of it. Yeah, but nothing not, not much else to say about Black Lightning. Aside from the fact he's a real character. And I do highly recommend checking out some of his other books that he basically has had over the years. Mm hmm Yeah. Now, as for outside of the outside the comics, well, he did appear. He appeared on the Barry Ball TV show, young version of him. He appeared also in Young Justice. Really good series, by the way. And, of course, you have his TV show. Yep, his TV show, which is still on you right now. It's currently in this third season. I have watched the show, a little bit of it. I've watched the first four episodes. I fell behind the show and haven't come back to it. And from what I've seen of the show, it is really good. It, The way they do the show, it's kind of similar to the style they did for 
the Daredevil Netflix series. It's done in the shot in the very same, same exact style, but done with different characters and different cameras. But mostly it's the same style. What people, what people like about Daredevil, the Netflix show, they did it for Black Lightning, which made perfect sense to do. And of course, the guy was also featured in the Christ and Rest Cross, which no, I have not finished watching yet. I've only watched the first three parts. I know that the last two parts aired a couple months ago. I just haven't had a chance to watch them yet. Yep. But not much else to say about Black Lightning. But he's a really damn good character. I highly recommend checking out his comic appearances and, of course, TV show because, of course, it's really good. Yeah. I'm kind of hoping at some point we get adaptation, like a live action version of. Like, I'm hoping at some point we get a chance to see the air version of Katana interact with Black Lightning. Yeah, I would personally love that very much because, well, there are two members of the Outsiders who actually are on TV at the moment. As far as I know, none of the, none of the other ones basically may appear. Well, they did have kind of a version of Geoforce and Arrow, but I highly doubt that was Geoforce because he had no freaking powers. I wouldn't be surprised if they featured him later on, or at least some of the, some of the other characters. I personally love to see the Outsiders on TV. They're a great group of characters. And, I mean, yes, you don't necessarily need to have Batman there, per se, but you can still feature the Outsiders. Yeah. And I got hands to the guy who plays Tobias Whale on the live action show. He's very much, like, from what I read from the comics, he's very much like the character from the comics. Even the guy who plays Black Lightning himself, he is very much in t tone with basically how he plays the character. He's like Crest Williams and like wow, he is like like compared to how he's depicted in the comics and compared to TV, the actor is a lot more beefier than the actual comic comic part. I'm not really sure exactly why in the world the guy had to be jacked in order to play Black Lightning. The character himself was still muscular but not that huge. It's not something that's distracting for the character. It's nothing against the character per se. But, oh yeah, and also, like, on the TV show they mentioned that he was a principal. That's something that's also true from the comics. He was definitely he was definitely a principal at one point. Yeah, I, I don't know if they actually have him, like, a love gold medalist. Now, so I might ask, okay, uh, did the guy have any facial hair in the comics? And was he bald? The answer to that question is, yes, he was bald at one point, and he still is. He's still bald. Yeah, he's still, he was bald for a certain period of time. And does he currently have any facial hair? The answer is no. He has no facial hair at all. That is something as original TV show. He did not have, he, technically from the comics I have read, he's mostly been clean shaven. That's pretty much how the guy is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but not much else to say about this character. Really good how they're going to check it out, okay? So, that's it for this particular review, and that's it for video So I wasn't thinking of doing any watch, but I just basically got distracted by other stuff, and, well, decided to put, because I wanted to do one more today, because I wanted to, I didn't have time to do any watch, so I figured, oh, why not do this, okay? Um, as what what episode, what character I'll do next? I don't know. I'll think about it at, at what, when I get a chance. Think about what, what character I'm doing next. It'll probably be for the 39th video of the series. I think it's the right? Actually, it'll be the 40th video. What video, what episode, what character do you in our least group? I have no idea. You'll find out basically when I get a chance to do the next video, okay? Do the next video. Bye.